Welcome to Nevada News Makes on the broadcast today, entertainment critic Howard Rosenberg for the whole show on an all new Nevada News Makers. We opened our first shoot back in 1919, and it's been a wild ride ever since. Come celebrate 100 years of the Rito Rodeo. Damn deal. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R A N N V. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers Comp that works for you. Truck drivers are some of the hardest working people you'll meet, delivering over 70% of America's freight and 92% of Nevada's. When there's a natural disaster, they're delivering critical supplies to help those communities recover and rebuild. Every sector of the economy and our nation's military rely on truck drivers. So let's take a moment to say thank you. On the open road or city streets, our truck drivers are rolling to make our economy and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're always pleased to welcome back to the program Howard Rosenberg, the entertainment critic. For 23 years, he was on Channel 2 up in Reno, mm -hmm. uh, criticizing everything. Um, and let's start out with uh, the Tonys. Ah, uh, they were wonderful. I don't like those kinds of programs generally because they're boring. Uh, I keep screaming at the screen, get off, all right, you thank the world, thank you so much, get on your way. It was tight, it was done well. James Corden is absolutely marvelous. The guy is a major force. I didn't, I've not realized it before. I've watched him on, you know, off and on, but he really did a beautiful, beautiful job. And, um, it gave people a chance to see what live theater can do, given the right time and the right place. But you know, what's interesting is, and, and I would agree with you that definitely this was a, a very good uh, uh, Tony's award show, um, but Broadway is doing so fabulously, period. I mean, beyond just trying to get a ticket, being able to afford a ticket is insane. True, true. Um, I can remember going into New York and going down into, the, into Times Square where the cut-rate ticket office was. I got a ticket to see a, a cabaret right in the middle of the orchestra. For one seat, you can usually get a good ticket. And I paid an exorbitant price. It was $32. <laughs> Today, that wouldn't get you into the front door. <laughs> <laughs> it's insanity, but people are willing to spend it if you've got something good for them to see. And I think that a lot of people don't recognize how much live theater has contributed to our entire society. And it's different when it's on film, because you know you can rewind it and see it again. When it's the live experience, you got one chance at it, kid, this is it, and that's all there is. I was looking at Hamilton tickets last year in Washington, D.C., at the Kennedy Center. They were 600 bucks yep. a piece for the cheapest seats. seats. Yep. And people were paying them. And people were paying them yes. because otherwise they'd have been on sale exactly. and they weren't. And they weren't. And I saw actually on uh, StubHub uh, two tickets for $25,000. Oh my word. I mean, I'm sorry, but I'll wait for the movie. Yeah, I, you and me both. But see, there, there again, 
it's almost backwards these days. In the olden days, it was the, the play, the musical would come out, it would play for two years, Hollywood would buy it, they'd adapt it, they'd make a good film out of it, and lots of luck. Now it's backwards. Tootsie is now the musical taken from right, th the, movie. the film. I mean, it, it's dynamite. But think back, Sam. 1948, the big ticket was South Pacific. That's the first time that we really dealt with interracial romance. Rodgers and Hammerstein changed the world with that show. The um, King and I, and another and one like it. Uh, well, and, and what's interesting about that is it wasn't until 100 Rifles with Jim Brown and Raquel Welch on the silver screen mm -hmm. uh, that that barrier was passed. Yes. It, it, there's a lot to learn, and you can learn it comfortably, pleasantly. Um, the King and I is one of my favorite. Mo I love that, that play. I love the film. I love the record. But the best piece in it isn't the most popular stuff. It's the king's puzzlement when he's telling the world quietly what he's going through, how he's suffering, what does he tell his son, how does he make it right for his people. Those are the questions that we were asking ourselves after the Second World War. We're still asking ourselves the same questions. Um, the movies, uh, you know, this is the big time for them, the spring and summer. Uh, for those listening on the radio or podcast, how it is rolling his eyes, we'll, we'll collect them and bring them back to him oh in a little while. Oh, my good Lord. Is, is there anything that's appealing Nothing. To? Absolutely nothing. Uh, Entertainment Magazine. They have the 10 best films of the year. I have seen garbage in my life, but this, <laughs> th this takes the cake. I mean, have you seen the John Wick series? Uh, no, I have them on my Everybody Netflix list. Everybody loves John Wick, and I don't understand it. John Wick 3 came out. In the first 20 minutes, he killed 77 people. I counted them. <laughs> None of them had faces. <laughs> what is that all about? Why? Wh wh I don't get it. What happened to telling me a story? From the beginning to the end, give me a middle, and let me think with you about what's going on. Isn't this, though, like the Cirque du Soleil um, idea, which is that you're making movies now, as well as shows, for an international audience, and they can't necessarily understand the dialogue, but they understand the action, and therefore they, they enjoy these movies? Because just in the United States alone, a movie can't ba make back its money. No, that's true. That's true. So the, the, the situation has changed. But do we have to throw the baby out with the bathwater? You don't give them everything. You educate them like we educated the American public to movies when D.W. Griffith first started. We began. Now, back and forth, Cry the Beloved Country, uh, films like this that taught us something about our, our world and about our lives and how we might live them better than we do. It's not just about making money, Sam. We have an obligation to the public. Okay, so, so do we, though? I yes. mean, is it, yes. wh why should the entertainment industry be responsible for educating the public about the way that life should be? It's not, it's not just, you know, educating the public, but you can put that in and give that a little bit of time when you're balancing it with some of the other stuff that they want to see. What's the difference between killing 150 people and 100 people? Yeah, uh, 50 people. I mean, hello? <laughs> Come on, Sam. There's got to be something else worth seeing out there. I went to a movie last Saturday. I haven't walked out of a movie in a long, no. long time. No. You yes, walked out? I walked well, out. Yeah, which one? Souvenir. It is the most boring piece of garbage I have ever seen in my entire life unattractive people doing unattractive things, talking about stuff that doesn't interest me in the least because they haven't given me any basis for it. You have to tell me something. Tell me a story. That's your job. That's what you do if you're doing it right. Okay, have you seen Rocket Man? Yes. What do you think? Not as good as Bohemian Rhapsody. Is, it, fa long is it fair to compare them? Yes, I think so. They're both biopics, essentially. One is Queen and one is Elton John. Elton John is the executive producer of Rocket Man, so there's an awful lot of Elton in it that might have better been left out of it if someone had a more measured way of, of, of equating what's going on on the screen. Some of it is quite good. 
The guy that plays Elton is fantastic. He does a brilliant job. I think the movie was sabotaged in the editing room. It's the way it's edited that's really causing the grief, I think, that the film is experiencing. Were you surprised at the success of Bohemian Rhapsody? Because people that knew Queen were very familiar with them. Yeah. But for those that didn't know Queen, it was amazing of how successful this movie was. I didn't know Queen all that well. I'm 100 years old, Sam. My idea of a good Conservative musical. Conservative You know, my idea of a good musical is South Pacific, The King and I, Kiss Me Kate, wonderful old things like that. But you have to keep up. I mean, the kids are going to see it, so I figure, what the hell, I'll go and see it. I was amazed. It took me in instantly because it told me a story. And it kept reinforcing the storyline. One of the things that's wrong with Rocket Man is once you've made your point, you have no place else to go. So don't make your point right away. Make your point over a period of time and give me the musical numbers in place of the dialogue that will tell me what I need to know. We will rock you. All right? They're not just words, Sam. They're what these guys are attempting to do and did. Freddie Mercury was quite something. Did it make you want to see other things from Queen? Yes. Yes, it did. And it made me say to myself, you idiots, you wasted time and you wasted money. Because do you know how many times I get telephone calls? Let's go and see. Bla I don't want to have any interest in that. I, I have a responsibility to see these things. If I'm going to be a critic, I have to have something to compare. And when I say no, that's not my job by a long shot. By the same token, I don't want to have to go through 20 minutes like what I went through last Saturday ever again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a break more with Howard Rosenberg, who's now in recovery after this. Oh, it Tamarack Junction is South Reno's hotspot with over 450 of the latest slots and video games. Sully Sports Bar, the Dining Car Restaurant, William Hill Sportsbook, and the Tamarack Steakhouse and Lounge. We're just north of the Summit Mall in South Virginia. Yeah. Because of UMC, there's a wide open road ahead of me. Because of UMC, she can grow up with her twin sister. Because of UMC, I'm here to help you. UMC, the highest level of care in Nevada. Hi, I'm Eric Robnett, owner of Home Energy Experts. Has this ever happened to you? Honey, did you remember to turn down the thermostat? <sighs> Forgetting to set the temperature? Not fun. We can help. Our new smart thermostat keeps the temperature set for your comfort all by itself. I'm feeling hot now. <sighs> to increase your comfort, go to homeenergyexperts.com for details. That's homeenergyexperts.com. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. The Tamarack Junction Steakhouse is known for signature steaks, handcrafted cocktails, and world-class wines. Join us Thursdays and Friday nights from 4.30 to 6.30 in the Steakhouse Lounge for live music, gourmet plates, and well-priced wines just north of the Summit Mall on South Virginia. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with entertainment critic Howard Rosenberg. I've never seen you bring notes. I decided I'd bring notes because I wanted to remember, you know, the order in which things happened. Beetlejuice. Yes. Is a musical now. Okay. I didn't like the movie. <laughs> I don't think I liked the play. <laughs> but, but, the musical number that they showed last night at uh, Radio City Music Hall was fantastic. I mean, really great. I've never seen so much energy in one place in my life, which I think is fantastic. All right, so, so what do you think the, you know, the theater's role is? I mean, obviously it's to entertain people who are actually in the theater, but is there a bigger role in terms of being able to inspire people in movies, in television, in other areas? Yes, yes there is. Look at Tootsie. 
Tootsie was a wonderful film. I loved it. I, I think Dustin I've seen the Hossman. damn thing five or six times. I've used it in class with the kids because it's dynamite. It really, really is. Now they've turned it into a musical. It took them almost three years to do it because the kid that's playing the, you know, Tootsie, Michael Dorsey, had to learn to sing in two different registers. This is not the easiest thing in the world to do. It takes skill and it takes a hell of a lot of time and effort to do it. Um, the little bit that they showed last night really made me want to run and see it. Um, choir Boy. Now, I knew nothing about Choir Boy. I knew nothing about Hadestown. And that took practically everything that there was last night. I've got to go to New York and I've got to see it. So now at least I know I've got to get there because there's something worth seeing. But Choir Boy, nine guys, young men, singing a cappella and stomping so that the beat would be, you know, kept on. It's not music in the general sense, but God, it was fantastic, Sam. I got to ask you about an older show, which is Book of Mormon. Oh. It, it, I, I loved the show. I thought it was hysterical. But I was surprised that the Mormon church uh, didn't respond back in a negative way. They just left it alone. What are you going to say? There was so much in it that was true. And, th you know, being able to make fun of yourself, I think, is one of the best things that could ever happen to anybody. So, you know, if, if somebody, you know, shoots a nasty crack at me, all right, fine. Sometimes it hurts, sometimes it doesn't. But it, it happens. But with the Book of Mormon, they took the, the most outre things in the world and made them work. Because everybody knows, oh my word. Sam, I can remember teaching at PS 86 in the Bronx in New York back in the year two yes. when I was a child. And my principal came down one day. I'd been there for about a month and a half. She said, Howard, do you speak Yiddish? <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, I, 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 I understand it because my grandparents spoke it. But do I speak Yiddish? No. Well, there was a kid that was having a bad day. He didn't speak English in, in a way that they could understand what he was talking about, but he spoke Yiddish. I understood it. I couldn't necessarily talk back to him right away, but at least there was somebody that knew what he was talking about. It's that kind of thing that we all have a responsibility for, and how many of us use Yiddish words in everyday, you know, parlance and don't even realize that they're Yiddish words? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Let's take another break. We'll be back with more with Howard Rosenberg after this timeout. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. Are you a homeowner who's interested in remodeling or building a home? At Design Outdoor, we can show you how adding natural or manufactured masonry stone can add beauty and value to your home. And we refer only the best contractors. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. Hey guys, are you watching the game at a friend's or the bargain because you can't watch at home with your wife? Or worse, because she kicked you out and kept your couch, your flat screen, and your kids? What's the one thing a man needs when he loses a good woman? A good lawyer. And when he loses a bad woman, he needs a great lawyer. What makes a good woman a bad woman? You tell me. You're the one that can't watch the game in your own home. I'm men's rights attorney Marilyn York, and I represent men in divorce, custody, and family law matters. Hi, I'm Dave Newman. Remember me? I used to be the house detective, and now I'm a realtor, full-time at Remax Realty Affiliates. And a lot of people ask me, how's the market? You know what? It's fantastic. If you're even kicking around the idea of buying or selling, give me a call. Let's talk about it. Call me at Remax Realty Affiliates and just ask for the guy who used to be the house detective, Dave Newman. Everyone is talking about opioids, but they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take an Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. This is Nevada Newsmakers. 
And back on Nevada Newsmakers, as we continue our conversation with entertainment critic Howard Rosenberg. So Celine, Di Celine Dion wraps up this amazing residency at Caesars Palace. Mm -hmm. um, was it 16 years, something like that? Um, she really changed the face of Las Vegas performances, although it's interesting, when I first came to Nevada in the late 70s, um, it was not unusual to have major stars performing for two weeks at a time. Right. Um, right. And then we lost that, and then it became maybe one, possibly two nights. And then this residency that lasted so long. Where do you think this is going now? I don't know, Sam. It depends upon the audience and where the audience wants it to go. That's the biggest problem with most entertainment directors, what they have to go through. They've got to plot out what what is it that the audience wants to see? How often will they come back to see it? When Debbie Reynolds would, was on the circuit, and you know, back in the late 60s, early 70s, she'd play four weeks in Reno, but there'd be two weeks in May and two weeks in October. Then she might play two weeks up at the lake so that the, the venues could make a deal where they could make money, she could make money, and not kill herself in the process. But in those days, Sam, they were doing two shows a night, seven nights a week. That's a hell of a lot of, en of energy right. for an older star to put out. I don't know whether or not that kind of thing would work. By the same token, you had 570 seats, let's say, in Harris in the, uh, the Sammy showroom, as opposed to there are thousands in Caesars down in Las Vegas. Right, 4,000, so, yeah. Okay, so you're, you're doing essentially four days in one night. Um, what did you think, um, you know, the, the Michael Jackson show at Mandalay Bay mm -hmm. has been incredibly successful. It's a Cirque du Soleil production. Um, they got a lot of heat because of that documentary that just came out True. that was attacking Michael Jackson, but they totally ignored uh, all the negative publicity. And, th and that was my question. Who cares? My, jo my job as an entertainer is to entertain you on the stage, on the screen, whatever the venue happens to be. Your job is either to like it or not like it, and hopefully you like it so you'll come back to see me again. That's the trick. Debbie had a major war with Caesars in Las Vegas when she decided she'd give them a try. Well, they raised their rates. Her audience couldn't afford the tickets. I mean, $35 a ticket was one thing. $70 a ticket was something else. And she told them, no, she paid them not to perform because she wouldn't do that to her audience. I think that an entertainer, an entertainment director, has to know who his audience is, what it's willing to pay, what it can pay, and still be there for the next time that particular unit comes through. Um, you now have, within another year or so, um, the 65,000 seat arena uh, that's going to be the home of the Raiders in Las Vegas. But one of the other things is that there are a lot of major entertainers like Adele, for example, yes. that have not had a venue to play in Las True. Vegas. Um, so do you look at this as another opportunity for major acts to come to Nevada? I think that the act would have to say to itself, what's the difference with my doing this here and them watching me on television at home because that's what they're watching anyway. They're watching a big television screen because they can't see me. I'm only six foot tall and they're sitting 9,284 miles away. <laughs> I mean, give me a break. Who wants to go through that? By the same token, I went to see Cher at uh, Lombardi Recreation, okay? Um, it, I don't know how many people it seats, but it's in the thousands. She was fantastic. And we were sitting way up in the nosebleed section I had a really good time. Cher did a wonderful job, won awards last night, the uh, Cher show. Yeah, Yanni, I remember you and I went to see that mm -hmm. show at right. Walla. Yep. And um, it was interesting because you had so many choices of how to enjoy that show. You could watch what was happening on the stage or you could watch the television production that was even better that put people who were a half a mile away, away on the stage next to each other. So why each other. would I have to pay $200 for that, Sam, when I can see it at home for nothing? I, I think it's the experience that you have talked about of being in a live audience and getting the there audience is reaction. a magic that happens. And that's an important factor. And a lot of people have never experienced it. And when they do, they get it. But you've got to do it first. Plus, 
you have to decide where you're going to spend your money. A lot of people don't have that kind of disposable income these days. They just don't have it. Um, in, in Laughlin, Anthony Marnell put in a, uh, I think it was around 10,000 seat um, outdoor venue. And he's now duplicating that for about eight or 9,000 people in Sparks, Nevada. And um, that'll be the second largest um, That's the one that they, the Nugget's going to open with Toby Keith. Correct. Okay. okay. What do you think about Next that? Next week. I don't know, Sam. I don't know. It seems like an awful lot of space to take up. And how, how often is it going to be used? Um, if it's used every other week, you know, something like that, maybe it will work. But they built a small amphitheater that they were going to do all kinds of wonderful things with that never came yeah, out. Yeah, but that was the city rather than being granted the nugget. But by the same token, when the city saw that it wasn't working the way it was supposed to work, I'm sure they went and asked for help. Yeah, I don't think Toby Keith was the kind of entertainment that they were putting into that amphitheater. No, neither do I. <laughs> by the same token, you're closer. You might find someone that you never recognized had the possibilities. You know, that's what entertainment is all about, Sam. You can go to see a show that's the same show, but you can see it on different nights and it does things that are entirely different. And in these days, if you have that kind of money, that's a fabulous way to be. Yes, it is. And we'll be right back. Thanks, Howard. A bird's eye captures its surroundings at different heights. At Brian Culp of Photography, we can make your imagination soar over buildings, parks, cityscapes, and beyond. Brian's images tell the story and get the job done. If you need a new perspective to tell your story, contact Brian today. Brian Culpa Photography. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Ah! Ah! Hey, Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this! Wow! This stuff is great! People are gonna love it! Yes. Yes, they were. St. Ives Florist, for every holiday and every special occasion. For romance. Custom home design. We have the largest selection of fresh flowers in Northern Nevada. And we also offer a large selection of unique gift items. Come see me, Lori Ann, at St. Ives Florist, 700 South Wells Avenue, or call me at 333-9190. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Don't forget another way of watching Nevada Newsmakers is to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Nevada Newsmakers, on YouTube. We'll see you on the next broadcast.